Now, here's your forecast first, brought to you by Northwest Tire. Northwest Tire keeps you rolling down the road. Hey, very good evening at North Dakota on this election day. The snow has wound down. We are still looking at some very cold temperatures and still a little bit of a breeze out there from the northwest that is making for some very, very cold wind chills. If you're going outside tonight, make sure that you do dress up. We are looking at Bismarck, the state capital right now. Our temperatures fall in the 21 degrees. Wind still out of the northwest there, 20, making it feel like 6 degrees. Tonight, expect those temperatures to drop down into the teens. Winds will calm down eventually talk more about the next system to arrive. KX News at 10 starts right now. KX News, your local election headquarters, election 2018. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our special election night coverage. I'm Chad Muir. And I'm Lauren Culver. Thanks for tuning in at 10. Polls across the state are officially closed and those results they're coming in fast and we're keeping a close eye on all of them. We're going to start with the biggest race in the state. This one has huge national impact and that is the race for the U.S. Senate. You can see the results coming in here with 79% of the precincts reporting. Congressman Kevin Kramer with 57% of the votes. He originally wasn't even going to run for this race. He said he was happy in the House, but after some prodding from the president, he jumped in and now voters are, seem to be pleased with that decision. He is ahead 57%, 57% to 43%. That one has been called, I believe, by the Associated Press already. North Dakota and the nation have had their eyes on this Senate race for the last six months, if not longer. Mm -hmm. We're going to go live over to Malik Rankin now. She's standing by at the Republican Victory Party in Bismarck. Malik. Can you hear us? Lord and Todd, it's easy to say that this is a high-energy place. Kevin Kramer just took the stage. It's his first much. appearance thanks, since the vote was called. Let's listen to what he's got to say right now. This. this is cool. You know, it would be impossible. It is impossible for me to express the depth of my gratitude for so many people tonight, many in this room, throughout the state, throughout this country. You know that... Uh, I'm going to do my best, however, to try and say thank you to as many as possible. But forgive me if I don't name every one of you. Our family has been on quite a journey this year. I don't think there's any mistake about it. After more than a year of persuasion, and I, I just got off the phone with President Trump and Vice President Pence. <laughs> As the energy continues tonight, we'll be hearing more of what Kevin Kramer Senator said, and I will send it back to you both the in the studio called. for now. Thank you. And just before the president. Well, having some trouble hearing Malik there, but yeah. you could hear a little bit of Congressman Kramer's uh, victory speech, or should we say Senator-elect Kramer now. That's right. Mm -hmm. So let's continue on with our election coverage tonight, moving on over to some statewide measures. Measure 3, the Marijuana Initiative, one of two states to put recreational marijuana on the ballot this year. And let's take a look at the results coming in right now. 61% of the vote voting no against legalizing recreational marijuana. Right now, there are nine states in the country that have legalized it, plus Washington, D.C., but with 79% of the precincts reporting, the no vote is on top right now. Now, moving on to the United States House race. Whoever wins this one will be newly elected. We have three candidates here. Kelly Armstrong, Republican, Max Schneider, Democrat, Charles Tuttle, the independent Kelly Armstrong taking the top spot in Congress, winning easily tonight with 62 percent. So a couple new members of our North Dakota legislation now. Now we're going to go live to Renee Cooper. She is at the North Dakota Democratic Party. That one is out in Fargo. Renee. Thanks, Chad and Lauren. The doors opened up at 8 p.m. here at the Doubletree in West Fargo. But well before 8 and even before most of the major candidates made their way into Fargo, supporters were lined up well into the lobby. I spoke with two of the Democratic candidates in the highly contested races this year. Democratic candidate for Secretary of State Josh Brisset says he's going to continue to work hard in the legislature and bring changes to our election systems and security that way, even if he's not elected. But despite being down in the polls with over half of them reporting, he remains optimistic. Just about a half hour ago, House candidate Max Schneider called his Republican opposition, Kelly Armstrong, to go ahead and concede the race. He told me if there's ever an opportunity to run again, he'll jump at the chance. You don't stop fighting for North Dakota. When something's worth fighting for, you keep doing it. And uh, I love this state. This is my home. It's been a little quiet here at the Democratic Party. 
It's certainly a packed house with a lot of optimism and certainly a good bit of enthusiasm. But there's been little victories for the party so far. And I've yet to see Senator Heidi Heitkamp, who most supporters and volunteers came out in support of today. Hopefully, guys, we'll get to hear from her soon. I know this crowd is certainly anxious to. For now, I'll send it back to you in the studio. Yeah, I bet they are. Renee Cooper reporting live from Fargo. Thank you. There's another race we've been mm -hmm. following that Democrats had high hopes for, and that is the Secretary of State race. That's right. Voters might have noticed something interesting on this one when voting because there were three candidates, none listed as Republicans. Al Jager is on the ballot and is a Republican, but he's listed as an independent. Josh Boucher is the Democrat. Michael Coachman is independent, and Al Jager listed as in, uh, incumbent, uh, incumbent and independent as well. And Al Jager, so far in the lead, with 79% of the precincts reporting and 49 percent of the vote. Now taking a look at the race for agriculture, Commissioner Jim Dotsonrod was the Democrat going up against Republican incumbent Doug Goring. Looks like Doug Goring is in for another four years. Another race we've been watching is for tax commissioner incumbent Ryan Rauschenberger. A uh, bit of a controversy surrounding this race. Rauschenberger arrested for DUI last year and Kylie Overson, the Democratic challenger, even using that dash cam video of that arrest in one of her campaign ads recently, saying this is a man who can't be trusted. However, the voters so far looks like they still trust him to keep the office with 79% of precincts reporting. Rauschenberger with 60% of the vote tonight. And in the race for the Attorney General, Wayne Stengem has been in office since 2000. David Thompson was his Democratic opponent. Looks like Stengem will keep his position as the state's Attorney General. 69% of the vote, 79% of precincts reporting. The longest serving Attorney General in the state. Now a couple of public service commissioner seats on the ballot as well. We're going to start with the four year term race. The incumbent in this one was Randy Chrisman. He's been around since 2012 in that seat, and he is looking good to serve another term. He's going up against Democrat Jean Brandt. She has served on several electric cooperatives as the director. She's pointing to that as a reason why she would make a good public service commissioner. However, Chrisman was 63% of the votes so far, looking strong there. Now there was a two-year term on the ballot as well, and that was for Republican Brian Crossius. Crossius up for election as the incumbent, not re-election. He was appointed to this seat by Governor Burgum when Brian Kalk uh, left for the private sector. Crossius looking good to win his first election, 63% to 37 for Casey Buckman. And so far this election, measure number three has taken up most of the oxygen, but voters did see three other measures on their ballots today, including measure number one. This measure changes a few rules in North Dakota's constitution. It creates an ethics commission and puts restrictions on lobbyists. This is very close, but so far the yes vote is leading with 53%, but that there are still a lot of precincts left to report. Mm -hmm. A lot of money being pumped into that race, too. We're going to move on to Measure 2. Now, this was the one that would change the Constitution as to who is allowed to vote. It would really just change one word in the Constitution. It, right now it says every citizen of the U.S. can vote. It wants to change it to only a citizen of the U.S. can vote. Uh, supporters saying they want to change it to close any potential loopholes there. And 67% of the voters giving that a thumbs up. They say yes, 33% no at this time. And here's the final measure tonight, Measure 4. This one gives first responders a special license plate paid for by the state of North Dakota and the taxpayers. And we like to support our first responders. This was a yes vote overwhelmingly with 63%. Yet one more race to look at in this election for U.S. Supreme Court. Incumbent Lisa Fair McGevers and Robert Belinsky. Lisa Fair McGevers uh, leading right now with 65% of the vote. A lot of results still coming in to, to us uh, here at KX News, your local election headquarters. Stick around. We're going to look at some of the legislative races coming up next.
You're watching KX News, your local election headquarters. Yeah, welcome back to KX News and our election night coverage. We have contested races all over the state tonight. Let's get right into these district races. These are the people that will be at the state capitol this January. First up is District 1 in Williston, the Senate race. Brad Beckadall is the incumbent and Melissa Johnson. Right now, zero precincts are reporting, so those are the right numbers that you see on your screen. Yeah, we're still waiting for these District 1 numbers to come in. So let's take a look at the House candidates, too. You're going to see zeros on that screen as well. But you have Patrick Hedlstad, the incumbent in this race. And then there's one more seat who will be replacing a uh, retire retiring Republican, uh, David Richter, on the ballots there. He's the executive director of the Great Northwest Regional Education Association. Uh, and then the Democrats on the ballot, Krista Parkinson, and Lindsay Walsh as well. We'll let you know as soon as some of those numbers start to come in. Now we're going to move over to District 3 over in the Minot region. Some interesting races here. You notice Andy Maragos's name. This is the state Senate though. Maragos, longtime House member. However, he didn't win his party's nomination in that race, so he decided to petition to get on the Senate ballot. But the incumbent, Ole Larson, too much to overcome in that race with all the precincts reporting. Ole Larson, 53% of the vote, Marigos, 24%, and then Joey Nesdal, the Democrat there, with 23%. Then for District 3 in the House, Marigos is not on this ballot. There was another Republican retiring, so we will have two newcomers from District 3 in the House. And right now, the top vote getters, Bob Paulson with 32%, and Democrat Shannon Kruger has 18%. She's really focused her campaign on providing a quality education. Let's take a look at some of the other. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Jeff Hoverson has 34%. That is higher than Kruger's number. So uh, both Republicans, Hoverson and Paulson, uh, will go on to uh, join the House in District 3. Now to District 5, we will look at the Senate candidates for District 5. Uh, we have Randy Burkhard there. He was first elected in 2010. He wants to focus on getting more funding for education as well as flood protection. And uh, voters want to give him a shot. Another round in office, 69% of the, of the vote there with 100% of precincts reporting. And then in the District 5 House race, we have the incumbent Scott Lauser there with 42% of the vote. Jay Fisher with 38%. And Zachary Rackman-Rood, the Democrat, put up an interesting campaign, uh, campaigning for free tuition for trade schools as well as community colleges. Got 20% of the vote, but it looks like the two Republicans will take those seats as well. And moving on to District 31, Donald Shibley, Republican incumbent, and Rochelle Hall, Democrat. Shibley will be in for another term and wins big tonight with 58%. Democrats put forward no candidates in the House race, so incumbents Karen Rohr and Jim Schmidt are going to be reelected. Now let's look at District 7. We have three candidates in this race, only two move forward. So far, that looks to be Rick Becker, a Republican incumbent, and Republican incumbent Jason Doctor, both defeating Paul Wilkins tonight. That is 100% of the precincts reporting, so that number is final. District 7 State Senator Nicole Poolman is also reelected. She had no opponent this year, so Chad will quickly send it back to you for a race just decided. Thanks, Lauren. We are going to go to District 35 here in the Bismarck area. Really interesting race here. Senator Aaron Oban, one of the few Democratic incumbents running for re-election across the state. And she's going up uh, against a well-known name, Gary Emenef, uh, former Indy GOP chairman. He was also running for the U.S. Senate briefly before Congressman Kramer decided to jump in that race. And he switched to the state Senate. But however, the, the Democrat Aaron Oban wins this race with 54% of the vote to MNS 46%. Now, District 35 House race. A couple of longtime incumbents here. Bob Martinson, you might recognize his name. He's been in the House since the 70s, except for a few years where he left to be state tourism director. He says, you know, his, his, he has a strong voice at the table because he's been around for so long. Voters seem to like him. He has 29% of the vote. And Karen Carls, the other incumbent, also a 29% of the vote. And the Democrats on the ballot, if we have them up here, Joe Ellsbury and Rachel Thomason, both really running a campaign on strengthening our education. Ellsbury deciding to get involved in politics, he said, because of Bismarck's decision to 
look at possibly closing down some smaller neighborhood schools. Uh, decent showing, 22% for Thomason, 20% uh, for Ellsbury. All right, now staying in Bismarck, let's take a look at District 47. First, looking at the Senate race, Brandy Jude was the Democrat, Mike Dwyer was the Republican, and right now, Mike Dwyer is leading, actually has declared victory with 67% of tonight's votes. Then to the House race in the same district, District 47. Larry Clemine and George Kaiser, the two Republican incumbents there, both going on to another term. Clemine says this time he really wants to focus on uh, some Department of Corrections reforms, the Justice Reinvestment Bill. That's where they're going to reallocate some funds to hopefully help create uh, some more mental health services. Moving. Oh, excuse me. Go, Go ahead. Here. Moving west now, we have one last Senate race to talk about, and that is District 37. Rich Wardner is the Republican incumbent Senate Majority Leader. Travis Brazelton, zero precincts reporting. So those numbers are correct, zero percent. Mm -hmm. And we'll have the District 37 House results as well. I'm guessing those will say zeros also. Also, mm -hmm. of course, out there in that district that's farther west, those polls stayed open a little bit later. So we'll have to keep an eye when those results come in. And of course, head to our KX website, MyAndyNow now.com for further breakdowns of the races that matter to you. Stick around. We have a lot more election results to cover, but we're also going to take a break and check in on this weather we've been having.